ages of British soldiers. How old do we suppose these guys are going to be? Well, if you enlist in the British Army during peacetime, you don't sign up for a four-year stint or two-year hitch or whatever like we think of today. You just join the Army. You take a job. And like most of us, when you take a job, you don't take a job and say, I'll work for you for two years and then I'll quit. You just take the job. And this is what joining the army was in the 18th century. You choose being a soldier as a career. And you continue to serve until you are no longer fit for service. And the army gets to decide that. You don't. Well, what does fit for service mean as a British infantry soldier in the 1770s? Fit for service means you can step out of your barracks at about 9 o'clock at night in Boston and you can walk to Concord, Massachusetts and walk back all in the course of a 24-hour period. Oh, and while you're fighting half of the time. That's about 40 miles out and back in a day. British soldiers did this kind of thing all the time. In September of 1778, a British force landed on one side of, what, what's the bay that New Haven is on, um, New Bedford is on? I don't remember that body of water. But was it Spain? Yeah, it went down, they landed on one side of the harbor of New Haven and then marched up over and all the way around back to Kushner in two days. Wow. And they did this sort of thing all the time. So that's what being fit for service means for British soldiers. You can walk 20 to 30 miles a day for a few days at a time before taking a break. And you can also do a lot of combat in the meantime. Once the war began, the war began in April of 1775, right? And once the war broke out, it took a little while for the British government and even the American government to recognize, okay, this is a real long-term war we have to fight. So by the end of the year, they said, all right, we have to make a big military commitment in America. We'll change the recruiting rules a little bit if you enlist after December 16th, 1775, you can serve for until the end of the war or three years, whichever is longer. So if the war ends after only two years, you have to serve three altogether. If the war goes on for eight years, which by the way, it did go on for eight years, you have to serve all eight years. And then you'll be eligible for discharge as long as you serve three years. So they make this change or wartime in order to increase the size of the army. But most of the soldiers that are serving in Rhode Island in 1778 enlisted during peacetime. So most of them are career soldiers. In the 22nd Regiment, I know that about 450 men were serving in Rhode Island in 1778. I know the ages of about half of them, 233, so that's 223 rather. So let's play, anybody play the British soldier age game before? Players all the time. How many of these soldiers? We have 223 soldiers that I know the ages of. This is about half the regiment. It's a pretty good statistical sample. Um, this is an army. These are guys who are capable of marching um, long distances. How many of these people do I suppose are between the ages of 15 and 20 years old? Probably a third. Probably a third. Answer is a number or a proportion as you did. So a third, anybody else? 30, 31 to 35. Uh, they're well, okay. Well, the answer is 17 of them are between the ages of 15 and 20 years old. How many do you suppose are between 21 and 25 years old? <laughs> anybody? Numbers and percentages. Yeah, either way, you choose. Mm -hmm. 60. 50? 50 men or 50%? 50 men. 50 men. 50 bodies. Turned out it's less than that. It's about 21 of them. So already I've got under 25 years old, we've got only about 38 men. So you have about 15% of them. How many are between 26 and 30 years old? Oops. 30. 30? 30? It's 38 altogether. And all this information was gleaned from the manifest. So we'll talk about this a little later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later about where the information comes from because there'll be other information. I said they were old men at that time. Also, well, that's what I look at. Between 30 and 40. Ah, that may not be quite right. Between 
quite so right either. 31 to 35 years old, they have 73 yeah. millions. Now we get into the sweet spot. 36 to 40 years old, 42. Mm. On and on and on. Well, if you know your statistics and you think about this thing called a normal distribution or a bell curve, yeah. that's what one looks well, like. Yeah, well, exactly. How do you get away having an army of all these guys who are in their 30s? Because this is typical. Any British regiment looks like this during the American Revolution. Mm. Well, I already said they're career soldiers, right? Mm. So if you serve for an entire career and you enlist around the age of 20, which is around the age that the majority of British soldiers enlisted, you end up with a distribution like this. You serve, you enlist oh, when you're... Distribution, you distribution know, shop. Yeah, it's, it's really nice, huh? Mm -hmm. But the point of this is that the typical British soldier was somewhere between 25 and 35 years old, and a substantial portion of them were older than 35 years old. Mm -hmm. These were not a bunch of kids. No, I was just saying. Not by any stretch. Younger. They're career yeah. soldiers, mm -hmm. and they're serving for as long as they're able to serve. You so say you get the 46 to 50 year old, and it decreases. So yeah. by that time they're burnt out and maybe unfit for duties? Well, yeah, and, and you can understand yeah. this again. Once, yeah. you, once you start to get in your 40s, you know, it gets a little harder to march 20 miles a day and sleep I mean, that too much. Well, but people are still doing it. Um, be careful about the idea that most people died around the age of 40. Um, statistically, that works out that way, but you're in a period where you have high infant mortality. And so that skews the, you know, the average lifespan it comes out a little funny because if you survive childhood, your odds of living up until your 50s or 60s are quite good, as long as you make it past being a child. So it's not like the death rate is really high for people in their 40s. It's actually fairly low, but it's really high for little kids, and that gets really high again when you get really old. Um, so... That's kind of interesting, right? Now this, the American army was very, very, very different from this. I don't have statistics on that, but don't assume that this was true for all armies during the time period. This is really, really different. If you look at a British, I mean, an American Continental Line Regiment, you are gonna see lots and lots and lots of teenagers and guys in their early 20s, and maybe a lot fewer older. 